the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our afflictions and thus enables us to comfort those who are in trouble with the same consolation we have received from Him. I bless the remains of Patrick with the holy water that recalls his baptism of which St. Paul writes, all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. By baptism into his death, we were buried together with him so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him by likeness to his death, so shall we be united with him by likeness to his resurrection. On the day of his baptism, Father Patrick put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed with glory.
My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray asking God to gather Father Patrick to himself. Let us pray. Lord God, you chose our brother Patrick to serve your people as priest and to share the joys and burdens of their lives. Look with mercy on him and give him the reward of his labors, the fullness of life promised to those who preach your holy gospel. We ask this through Christ our Lord. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that if our earth, earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. We are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On behalf of Bishop Solis, all the gathered clergy here this evening, and the entire staff of the Cathedral of the Madeline, and all of us gathered here this morning, this evening, I would like to offer to you, Sharon, and your entire family, our deepest and most heartfelt sympathy to you at this most difficult time. Tonight is a celebration of faith and the gratitude of a life well lived as we honor a brother, a pastor, colleague, and friend to so many. Father Patrick was someone who has been close to us and good to us for all these many years. Father Patrick was someone who will always be regarded as a unique treasure and a living legend. Not only the faith community of Ogden and Salt Lake City, but also around the country where he worked in his early years. We will miss his quick wit and gentle smile and laughter as he greeted so many of us each time that we were able to spend a moment with him whether it was at the church or some social gathering here or out of town, he will indeed be greatly missed. It could be said that Father Patrick never stood on ceremony, but in a way he always did and probably would not like all the attention that we are giving to him during this time of our sorrow. It's true that he liked to remain in the shadows on occasion, but somehow wound up at the center of life so many other times. He was always eager and energetic and loved to embrace new projects. He never slowed down and he never gave up. His imprint will always be a part of our lives. We know that with Patrick's death or with any death, there is always such a stark sense of finality. So we know there are so many things that we can do in life to alter and to change it. But one fact remains true. We can never go beyond what the limitations of life are. Patrick knew that and often preached on it himself. With death, we know that it is easy to drift into a kind of hopeless attitude and began to think that death is really the end of everything. And so to offset this, the church, 
and the liturgy of the word draws on readings from sacred scripture that we have heard proclaimed here this evening. To confirm what Patrick proclaimed every day, that our faith is triumphant, that death is not the end, but rather it is the doorway to a new and better life in the kingdom of heaven. We know that with life, we in fact die to many things in order to become something new. From the moment we are born and during all of life's circumstances, we learn to change often. Such is the cycle of life, a cycle that Patrick himself experienced many times. With a life that began in Michigan into his high school seminary years, and culminating with his ordination to the priesthood in this cathedral of the year 2000. His life is now complete. The journey is over. He has now been born again into the everlasting life of the kingdom of heaven, promised by our Lord Jesus Christ on the day of his baptism. With sickness and the passing of life, one theologian writes, sickness seems always to take us by surprise. We seem unprepared for the limits beyond which our bodily being will not take us. Illness, therefore, deprives us of our projected future. In so doing, particularly if it is serious, it threatens the destruction of faith and hope. We have placed the most basic of unspoken trusts in this bodily life, and it has betrayed us. Because of that betrayal, we can no longer place any real trust in the future. Hope requires that we project that future as both possible and desirable. To the person who is seriously ill, the future often seems to be neither. Beyond lies the ultimate betrayal, which is death, now recognized as certain, even if not immediate. In the Eucharistic prayer leading to the consecration in the Mass for the dead, we hear these important words. In him, the hope of res blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life has changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. In the words of that prayer, we have a summary of the church's, uh, the church's doctrine concerning death and life after death. Patrick is with Christ and he will care for him. He is in a place of ultimate forgiveness and love. But that does not mean that we are left without help or hope. In John's Gospel that we heard proclaimed, the Lord tells us, there are many rooms in my Father's house. This obviously has an implication for those who have died, but it also applies to us. The translation rooms or dwelling places or even mansions is somewhat misleading. But in the language in which our Lord spoke, the concept was made much clearer. The word mansions was a word that applied to the caravans of ancient times. At nightfall, when a caravan reached an oasis, the people did not have to set up their tents and make their meals. There was already an advanced party there that did all these things. When the people in the caravan arrived, they could immediately rest. That work was done for them already. A brother Patrick is in such a place and happily reunited with his parents and all those who preceded him in death over all these years. The day Patrick prayed for for so many years is now his to behold. Yet in saying this, we are comforted by the peace and comfort that Christ gives us here on earth. We can feel this comfort in many ways. This comfort happens to our friends, who reach out their helping hand in Christ's name. It is at times like this that we truly realize how kind others can be. 
Patrick was blessed with a thousand close friends and around the country who visionally took care of his needs and made him a necessary part of their lives. We acknowledge his parish and civic friends who are here today and countless others who were so good and kind to him, especially his friends from Holy Family Parish in South Ogden. Patrick had a special place in his heart for the church, going back to the days when he was a young seminarian, up to the special time that he spent with his now deceased friends from St. Victor's Church in California, and especially his great mentor, Archbishop George Diederauf. This comfort also happens in our prayers. Patrick was a man of deep faith, I believe that it was providential that I met Patrick at the beginning of his priestly ministry at this cathedral in the year 2000. Together we shared common goals and challenges that are part of a major diocesan church. He loved his ministry, he loved preaching, and was always eager to give his all. This is why we gather tonight, because Patrick is finally in the eternal presence of Christ, where pain and sorrow are no more, neither sighing nor weeping, but life eternal. His journey of salvation, his journey of life is now complete, and we have the beauty of remembering the most endearing ways that Patrick was able to touch our lives. Patrick will always stand out in my life as a person who in many ways was bigger than life. There was nothing shy about Father Patrick. He would light up every room that he walked into. He would always welcome the stranger and easily made enduring friendships with so many. Whether at work or just relaxing, he was the center of it all. He liked a good glass of gin, as well as being energetic, and he liked a very energetic and lengthy conversation that would bury anybody. He could bur turn a barn into a palace, and he always had a semi-credible story about some aspect of life, which he hoped would be received as true. He was a master fundraiser and reveled in the challenge of a lifetime, in the building of a new parish church, but also the determination to embra embrace the death service of the new Holy Family Church in South Ogden. His four financial campaign, campaigns say so much about his final opus. It's very easy for us to become poetic about Patrick's life because he meant so much to all of us. He was that rare kind of individual blessed with so many wonderful gifts and through the grace of God was willing to share them. We are the beneficiaries of these gifts Patrick's life reminds us always that life may be difficult and enduring at times, and sometimes very lonely, but definitely worth living, and more importantly, worth sharing with others. The Lord did not give Patrick the benefit of a long life as we would have liked, but the years he did give him will live on in the many memories that we hold dear to our hearts here this evening. And now that legacy is ours. In the final night of his life, at the last concert he sat in this cathedral for, the final song of the concert was the Nunc Dimittis, that is, the night prayer, the final prayer of the night prayer of the church, the words that Simeon uttered when he had seen the Lord. And the words say, Now, Lord, you may dismiss your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. To Patrick, we can say with great certitude and faith, well done, good and faithful servant. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.
Let us turn to Christ Jesus with confidence and faith in the power of His cross and resurrection. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. God, listen favorably to our prayers offered on behalf of your servant and priest, and grant that Patrick, who committed himself zealously to the service of your name, may rejoice forever in the company of your saints. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The funeral mass will be held tomorrow, Tuesday, in the cathedral at 11 a.m. And please join us afterwards this evening for a reception downstairs. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord.
May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.